Hi everyone, this is me again, Jennifer, and we are back in another episode of the Sociolinguistic Series. Today, we are focusing on the language variety, especially the accommodation theory. In this video, I'm going to talk about the definition of the accommodation theory and then the key terms, which are the convergence and divergence. And then we are going to discuss about what it means when you do upwards or downwards convergence. We will end this discussion with the distinctions in doing the conversation accommodation theory. Okay, so what is CAT or conversation accommodation theory? A lot of people also uh, call this theory as the SAT or the speech accommodation theory, but to make it simple, I'm just going to say CAT for the rest of this video. Um, so CAT aims to understand why people change their manner of speaking when they talk to another person. Well, yeah, whether we realize it or not, sometimes we imitate the way people speak or sometimes we want to make a distinction of uh, how we speak in relation to other people in a face-to-face -face conversation. So yeah, conversation accommodation theory or CAT will deal with this. The key term in this theory is convergence and divergence, which means to converge or to diverge. So what it means by converging to someone's speech or what it means by diverging from someone else's speech. Let's see. So when you do convergence, when you are converging to a person's speech, it means that you modify your own speech patterns, your codes, to resemble more uh, closely to the one that you are speaking to. So for example, if you, if you talk with, uh, with a person you, you like very much, you will tend to start following their manner of speaking. Either it is their style, their pace, their um, tempo, yeah, pace, tempo, uh, their pronunciation, or sometimes you will start using some terms or some um, jargons that they're using. Some people tend to use the word like when they speak and then uh, if you really like the person, sometimes you will find that their vocabulary, their grammatical structure or anything that is, um, you, anything that you find as interesting um, to be blending in to your own speech. So when you do that, either consciously or subconsciously, it means that you have done. Uh, if it it means that you have converged. Uh, on the other hand, there is another term which is called the divergence. Divergent means, of course, it it doesn't mean that you follow uh, the speech pattern of those people you don't like, it only means that you modify your speech or you maintain your speech to be as different as possible from the person you are talking to. So uh, let's say you are talking to a person you think um, the speech pattern is not really good and you want to show um, this person or you want to show everyone that you are a lot better than this person. So you are going to try to make your speech as different as possible from, from him. So if they use a lot of slang and the location, perhaps the setting is in public and you don't want to be seen as um, not educated, you are not going to follow their way of speaking. Instead, you're going to use as polite words as you can. You will try to be different from the person you're talking to. So yeah, basically, converging means you are getting more similar to the person you're talking to, and divergent means that you are getting more different from the person you're talking to. 
Now, next, we have what we call as the upwards and downwards convergence. Now, this is quite easy. So, upward convergence means that you imitate the people you look up to. You think that they have better codes uh, in speaking. You think that if you follow that type of speaking, people will like you more. Or you think that you can learn more by imitating that person. So yeah, that is an upward convergence. So for example, if you're learning to be a nurse, if you're learning to be a nurse and then you are put under the supervision of a head nurse, which you admire a lot and you think that she is smart and this person is really, um, you can idolize them. So you start speaking like them so that people will look at you um, differently. You want to be seen as responsible as the head nurse. That is what upward convergence means. And when you are talking with the person, it can be seen as a polite speech strategy. Why? Because people will think that you accept them. And people will think that um, you respect them when you uh, start speaking in, in their own jargons, in their own tempo. So if you start to do convergence, if you start converging to, pers to people you admire and you think uh, can help you develop your own speech pattern in a better way, it means that you are doing the upward convergence. The downward convergence, of course, it doesn't mean that you um, follow those that are not good. It only means that you use simpler vocabulary to accommodate people who don't have as much linguistic understanding as you are. So let's say you're talking to a child. A child doesn't know a lot of um, vocabulary and they don't understand complex grammatical structure. To make sure that they understand, you will have to use vocabularies that they understand. It means that you cannot use those heavy big words that you use when talking to a university professor and you're going to use a simpler, sorry, as simple a sentence as you can. So the simpler sentence, uh, the better if you talk to a child. This also means uh, when you talk to a foreigner, so a tourist, for example, asking you uh, the way to a place, you're not going to use difficult vocabulary because you're afraid that they won't understand. Just let's say the tourist asks you in your own language and then you want to accommodate him or her. So you're trying to simplify your vocabulary. You're going to use simple sentences. You're going to use easy vocabulary and you will be using a lot of gesture to make sure that they understand. So that is what upwards and downward convergence means. Upwards, again, means that you follow those you think are better than you. Downward means that you lower your standard to be following those you think will not understand if you speak in your own usual way. So yeah, um, we're coming to the last part, which is the distinctions of convergence and divergence. We have several distinctions uh, in doing convergence and divergence. It means that you don't always do this. Okay, the first thing usually uh, is the full partial or hyper convergence. When you talk, uh, when you start your conversation by converging to this person until the end of the conversation, we call it the full convergence. And it means that if you only do do it uh, halfway or if you don't do it all the time, it means you are doing it partially. 
Hyper convergent means that even though you don't speak with that person anymore, you start developing your speech pattern as if you are that person. Yeah, sometimes hyper convergence can be um, flattering. Sometimes it can be used to mock somebody's um, style of speaking. So, well, yeah, it because you it means that you imitate it fully and then you use it outside the conversation with that person. And the second distinction is the way you converge. It can be unimodal, which means that you only converge in one sense of the way. I mean, uh, okay, you only follow their sentence structure or you only follow their vocabulary and nothing else. That is unimodal. In multimodal uh, model converging, you use more than one uh, type of codes that they use. Perhaps you want to follow their tempo as well as their speech vocabulary, or you want to follow their sentence structures and their pronunciation and their vocabulary. So unimodal only changes one aspect of your speech to be more alike that person. Multimodal means that you converge as many types of codes as you can to be more similar to that person. And then, of course, sometimes multimodality, sorry, this is not multimodality. Sometimes the converging can be symmetrical or asymmetrical. Symmetrical converging means that sometimes, um, sorry, symmetrical converging means that both of you converge to each other's speech pattern. So you follow him or them or her and they follow your speech pattern. So that is symmetrical. You are not the only one who does the job. Asymmetrical, yes, this is the opposite. Um, when you are doing asymmetrical converging, it means that you are doing this all the time. So in case of the, if you still remember the, my earlier example about the head nurse, uh, usually when you are doing upward comfort, convergence and you are trying to imitate the person you idolize, this is going to be asymmetrical. Why? Because you are the one who wants to try to be with, like them and they don't feel the need to be liked by you. So yeah, when you are doing the job alone, when you're doing this alone and the other person does not converge to you, it means that what happens is the asymmetrical convergence. The last type of um, convergence is called the subjective versus objective. Now, this is quite difficult to, um, to grasp because this is basically only between the people who speak. Um, subjective convergence means that you think you are converging to the person, but the person you're talking to doesn't feel like that. So you think that you are more similar to them, but they don't feel like you are more similar to them. Okay, perhaps this is a confusing concept, but hopefully you can understand. And when you are doing the objective convergence, it means that all parties involved understand that you are doing the convergence. Let's say a foreigner, um, a tourist, start talking to you in uh, Bahasa. They think they are converging to us in Bahasa. They think that they are speaking in the way we speak, using our jargons, using our um, anything, using our vocabulary, using our slang. But we, as the person they talk to, we think that he fails in doing it. He doesn't 
do what he is supposed to do, which means using bahasa in the right way, in our way. So it means that he only thinks that, but the truth is he is not converging at all. It means that what he did was the subjective converging. Meanwhile, if we think that he succeeds in using our vocabulary, using our pronunciation and everything, it means that he is doing the objective uh, converging. So, yeah, this is not a difficult concept, I think. Uh, and I believe that if you want to look at the way you speak with other people, you will find that you are doing this as well. Now, of course, before I end this, um, I want you to try to observe how a lot of people around you, I know this is still um, quarantine time, so yeah, just your family, notice if when they speak to another person, they are trying to converge or diverge. So yeah, with that, I'm going to bid my farewell and thank you for listening to me.